Good afternoon or good evening. This is Roger Gilbert and I'm now in Abu Dhabi and I'm attending the VIV Middle East Africa Expo that runs for three days and this is the first day. It, we've had yesterday the opportunity to hold a conference here as International Aquafeed uh, together with the VIV support. The conference dealt with uh, aquaculture, aquafeed extrusion and nutrition. It was a joint conference between the machinery and the nutrition when it comes to aquafeed. And I'm very pleased to say that I have one of our keynote and platinum speakers uh, with us uh, this morning. And he is Dr. Fasad Shiskinchan from Thailand, or si is it Singapore? Singapore. Singapore. Uh, I'm sure I've pronounced his surname incorrectly, I'll ask him to correct me, uh, but he's from Blue Aqua and Blue Aqua is developing a shrimp farm in Singapore, has activities in feed mills and uh, yesterday's conference he, de he dealt with the subject of intensifying shrimp farming and I'm pleased to say we have an opportunity to discuss that a little bit this morning. Uh, welcome Fasad. Yeah, good morning Roger, thank you for having this interview. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for supporting our activity, our conference. Uh, what were some of your takeaway messages uh, or thoughts from the conference yesterday? I think the whole conference went very well and uh, one of the key things that I noticed and it was great that you know I was there and at least I can notice that sometimes there is a, a gap of understanding between producer and consumer. So we had a great discussion on that uh, subject and at least we try to understand each other in terms of the feed production and the requirement of the feed for the shrimp and fish from the perspective of the farmer. Mm. Yes, that's a point that uh, I, I immediately latched onto that you said you were both a feed producer but also a farmer which gave you a different perspective. Yes, true. I mean in Blue Aqua uh, we are farmer, we are feed you know, manufacturer, and also we 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 do have also farm care product. So we have the the whole uh, value chain there. And when we talk about the feed, we understand exactly what do we need because we are using them ourselves. So sometimes, um, I mean, that's one of the reason that we start to manufacture the feed because we found that for at least for our own operation. Uh, the current uh, feed available in the market do not uh, you know match to our requirement mm -hmm. and that's i believe exactly come from a different point of view from the producer and uh, you know consumer and you know farmer like us yeah so do you, do you think that that has been created by maybe farmers not fully appreciating what goes into feed manufacturing i think the feed industry is uh, it's basically more than or close to 50 percent of the total value of the aquaculture production because whatever we produce at the end of the day the biggest uh, you know expenses for the farmer is the feed and uh, the company that they produce feed yes they are you know great company they have done a lot of great work but sometimes there is a I believe a gap of understanding and also not every farmer understand what they are buying so they may they may go to buy a feed due to many reasons from the uh, you know credit term that they get from a feed miller up to who they know and who's the supplier and what type of advertisement that feed company can have but that is not meaning that whoever they buy the feed that is you know has purchased through a correct investigation and understanding the quality of the feeds so how do we address that? Is, is it uh, a farmer awareness of the feed qualities that are out there? I think uh, number one is that the feed manufacturer, they should be more transparent in terms of what they are selling. I don't think so just putting the, like some basic information such as total protein, total fat and all those things will really uh, help to you know, justify or you know, understand the feed quality. Secondly, uh, there would be a definitely strong need for the education and training uh, to the farmers to understand when they are buying a feed, beside the cost and price, what are the other factors that they have to consider. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think these two items are very important. It means transparency from the feed mill side and also education to the farmer. Mm -hmm. And how would we go about 
helping educate farmers? I think farmers first they have to understand uh, why when they are buying a feed and uh, also based on their farming methodology and the way that they are doing the farming they have to choose their feed because definitely if you are a farmer that you are doing a very high stock in density especially in shrimp uh, you you do need a different quality of the feed compared to a farmer that doing a extensive farming so uh, and that's what uh, the farmer first and then also the the water quality like simple example like salinity if you have a high salinity you may need a different type of feed if there is a higher temperature you need a different type of feed so it is not that everywhere we can use the same recipe and uh, get the best result yeah. Uh, I'd like to turn our attention a little bit back to Singapore now. Uh, you've got an operation there, a fish production, uh, uh, shrimp, yes. a and anything else? Yeah, we, we have a we have a shrimp farm in Singapore. I think we are the only shrimp farm in Singapore. So we are doing it completely different from rest of the world. We are the first uh, RAS and ASC certified shrimp farm maybe in the world. Uh, we do three species of the shrimp, Japanicus, Venemi, and Monodon. And we are on the way of uh, completing our trout farm, which is 3,000 metric ton trout production, and also our feed meal. So uh, Singapore is a small, tiny dot um, on the map, and food security for us is extremely important. And we are doing our best to contribute to the Singapore food security. Yeah, and that security is... Uh, trying to achieve 30% of food production by year 2030? Uh, not really food. Uh, the, the definition of 30 by 30 is that 30% 30 of the nutritional requirement by the year 2030. Yeah. So we are, we are trying to be a hopefully big player on that for the seafood. Yeah. And uh, you have operations outside Singapore? Yeah, of course, we operate in almost 14 countries. But in terms of farming, we do have a farm, uh, you know, under the construction in Oman. We have a currently farm running in Indonesia. And we have a project that is uh, working on it in Brunei. So these are our farming. And also feed meal, uh, we will be also setting up in those countries. And uh, what's your project prediction of the future when it comes to uh, aquacultural production for foodstuffs? I think um, aquaculture, particularly among all the you know food production for human, is one of the key uh, basically uh, target and key uh, concern in many many different markets. Because we all believe that since you know we have almost 75 percent of our planet covered by the water, still at the end of the day, aquaculture is going to be the one of the major uh, you know source of the food production, and. A lot of a lot of companies nowadays they are really putting a lot of effort in terms of financial, R&D, education to enter to this uh, you know uh, business. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning, and uh, all the best with your developments. Thank you, Roger. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Fassad.